God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave entangled me. The traps of death confronted me. In my anguish, I called to the Lord. I cried to God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I love you, Lord. You, you are, are my strength. strength. The Lord has saved me. He wanted me for his own. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The mountains were shaken to their base. They reeled at his terrible anger. Smoke came forth from his nostrils and scorching fire from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by its heat. He lowered the heavens and came down, a black cloud under his feet. He came enthroned on the cherubim. He flew on the wings of the wind. He made the darkness his covering, the dark waters of the clouds his tent. A brightness shone out before him with hailstones and flashes of fire. The Lord thundered in the heavens. The Most High let his voice be heard. He shot his arrows, scattered the foe, flashed his lightnings and put them to flight. The bed of the ocean was revealed. The foundations of the world were laid bare. At the thunder of your threat, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your anger. From on high he reached down and seized me. He drew me forth from the mighty waters. He snatched me from my powerful foe, from my enemies whose strength I could not match. They assailed me in the day of my misfortune, but the Lord was my support. He brought me forth into freedom. He saved me because he loved me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has saved me. He, he wanted, wanted me for, for his, his own. own. Lord, kindle a light for my guidance and scatter my darkness. He rewarded me because I was just, repaid me for my hands were clean, for I have kept the way of the Lord and have not fallen away from my God. For his judgments are all before me. I have never neglected his commands. I have always been upright before him. I have kept myself from guilt. He repaid me because I was just, and my hands were clean in his eyes. You are loving with those who love you. You show yourself perfect with the perfect. With the sincere, you show yourself sincere. But the cunning, you outdo in cunning. For you save a humble people, but humble the eyes that are proud. You, O Lord, are my lamp, my God who lightens my darkness. With you I can break through any barrier, with my God, I can scale any wall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, kindle, kindle a light, light for my guidance, guidance and, and scatter my, my darkness. The Lord teaches the humble his way. He guides the gentle-hearted along the right path. From the letter to the Hebrews, Beloved, even though we speak in this way, we are persuaded of better things in your regard, things pointing to your salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him by your service, past and present, to his holy people. Our desire is that each of you show the same zeal to the end, 
fully assured of that for which you hope. Do not grow lazy, but imitate those who, through faith and patience, are inheriting the promise. When God made his promise to Abraham, he swore by himself, having no one greater to swear by, and said, I will indeed bless you and multiply you. And so, after patient waiting, Abraham obtained what God had promised. Men swear by someone greater than themselves. An oath gives firmness to a promise and puts an end to all argument. God, wishing to give the heirs of his promise even clearer evidence that his purpose would not change, guaranteed it by oath, so that by two things that are unchangeable, in which he could not lie, we who have taken refuge in him might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope which is placed before us. Like a sure and firm anchor, that hope extends beyond the veil through which Jesus, our forerunner, has entered on our behalf, being made high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus, our forerunner, has passed beyond the veil on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever of the order of Melchizedek. For all eternity he lives and intercedes for us. Because he can never lose his priesthood, there is no limit to his power to save all who come to God through him. For all eternity he lives and intercedes for us. From a commentary on the Psalms by St. Augustine, Bishop. God could give no greater gift to man than to make his word, through whom he created all things, their head, and to join them to him as his members, so that the word might be both son of God and son of man, one God with the Father and one man with all men. The result is that when we speak with God in prayer, we do not separate the Son from him, and when the body of the Son prays, it does not separate its head from itself. It is the one Savior of his body, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who prays for us and in us and is himself the object of our prayers. He prays for us as our priest. He prays in us as our head. He is the object of our prayers as our God. Let us then recognize both our voice in his and his voice in ours. When something is said, especially in prophecy, about the Lord Jesus Christ, that seems to belong to a condition of lowliness unworthy of God, we must not hesitate to ascribe this condition to one who did not hesitate to unite himself with us. Every creature is his servant, for it was through him that every creature came to be. We contemplate his glory and divinity when we listen to these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. Here we gaze on the divinity of the Son of God, something supremely great and surpassing all the greatness of his creatures. Yet in other parts of Scripture we hear of him as one sighing, praying, giving praise and thanks. We hesitate to attribute these words to him because our minds are slow to come down to his humble level when we have just been contemplating him in his divinity. It is as though we were doing him an injustice in acknowledging in a man the words of one with whom we spoke when we prayed to God. We are usually at a loss 
and try to change the meaning. Yet our minds find nothing in Scripture that does not go back to Him, nothing that will allow us to stray from Him. Our thoughts must then be awakened to keep their vigil of faith. We must realize that the one whom we were contemplating a short time before in his nature as God took to himself the nature of a servant. He was made in the likeness of men and found to be a man like others. He humbled himself by being obedient even to accepting death. As he hung on the cross, he made the psalmist's words his own. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We pray to him as God. He prays for us as a servant. In the first case, he is the creator. In the second, a creature. Himself unchanged, he took to himself our created nature in order to change it and made us one man with himself, head and body. We pray then to him, through him, in him, and we speak along with him, and he along with us. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I promise you that the Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Let us pray. Father of mercy, hear the prayers of your repentant children who call on you in love. Enlighten our minds and sanctify our hearts. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.